Hi there, that's right, it's Nick Dodge back on the camera yet again. Hi there, how the hell's it going? This is part of my request series, and I've had a request. <laughs> and the request is, Nick, I want to know why you think that people take to various different spiritual paths. Well, the answer to this is probably more simple than you might think. You might as well say, why do people buy Cosmopolitan? Why, why do people buy certain newspapers? Why do people watch certain TV shows? Why do people watch certain TV channels? Why do you personally select the Discovery Channel over, let's say, Nickelodeon? You know, there's a reason why. It's because it reflects either something you're aspiring to or a mood you're trying to reach, all right? Or it represents something about your character, your stage of life, the things that you um, already believe in, certain aspects of your character and of your nature, which is something that you need to have some kind of identity or reflection with. It uh, reflects the kind of attitude you have to knowledge or information. It reflects all kinds of things about you. And people's choice of religion and spiritual path is essentially no different. I mean, when people come onto YouTube and they, uh, they attack fundamentalist Christians, are they actually attacking Christianity? Not necessarily, not in all cases. In many cases, they're attacking people who are a part of Christianity, but have certain specific varieties of views. You see lots of videos about people saying, uh, you know, this is not against um, the moderates, this is only against the fundamentalists. And there's, of course, a reason for that, because the people who are making these views come from a certain political standpoint, and they're attacking another set of political ideas. And so, my point is that people, I, people unite with things that they identify with. Now, this could be going back to um, the views that they were indoctrinated in when they were a child, uh, and therefore trying to have, feel that feeling of resonance between what they were told to be when they were younger and what they can then become or convert to with the passage of time. Or it could reflect some uh, emotional need that they've got. For instance, um, resentment, hatred against another group, uh, or maybe uh, some desire to feel different. Okay. So when you're looking at different spiritual paths, you're looking much more at the psychology of the individuals who have chosen to follow them. All right. So there are, you know, there are moderate Christians, there are more liberty-minded Christians, there are progressive Christians, there are hookers for Jesus. Okay. It's, there's quite a broad spectrum, even just within Christianity. <clears throat> but also there are uh, varieties of group think, as some people call it, within the various religious groups. And people can choose to identify more with this group think rather than the information written down in the texts of that particular religious group or the views and values of the person of that particular religion should be um, actually uh, subscribing to or trying to find out more about or trying to follow if they were truly a part of that particular faith. They may go with that group think and they can have that feeling of identification, that sense of resonance between something which is inside them in their character, in their personality, their views, their political outlook, uh, on their very mentality, as well as something else reflected within the group. So, it's, it feels to me to be much more a question of psychological dynamics. I mean, Maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm a different case. I don't know whether I am. I had strange experiences when I was young. I wanted to find out more. I was kind of like cursed with a, with a disease that I was born with, and I had to try and find a cure for that, and medical science at that time wasn't really helping me. Uh, and I thought that maybe the strange experiences I had were, in, were indicative of uh, a greater reality that one could then use to assist in the healing of my health problems, which, of course... You know, things didn't actually quite work out in, according to plan. Eventually I realized that a lot of people within the occult world, within the New Age world, actually don't know what they're talking about and have very little understanding of the meanings of the words they're using uh, and certainly don't fulfill the prerequisites of science and art as in the Crowley's definition of magic. Okay, but, you know, that's a bit of a digression and a bit of a story about me. But let's go back to the subject of why people choose various religions. I mean, I'm going to give you an example. 
there's this person I used to know um, who when I was having dinner with them at one time suddenly came out with a peculiar expression uh, suggesting that the Jews in the concentration camps were somehow um, hypocritical because they have highfalutin morality and yet when a Gestapo concentration camp guard points a gun at them uh, these concentration camp inmates will end up um, killing somebody else because they're told to and that's a demonstration of the, uh, the hypocrisy and immorality of the Jew um, but now if that type of statement was made about any social group whether it's um, a class, let's say middle class, working class, underclass, upper class whether it's um, a race or a religious group, even like um, the gays, the Islamic people, um, any groups, blacks, whites, yellows, greens, I, you know, I, I don't care. It would still be regarded as being an expression of very illiber illiberal views and also illiberal views which are being stimulated and fortified by a, a false folk myth. But yet this individual came out with this particular phrase. Um, and a short while after, she converted to a variety of Christianity which we have in this part of the world, which is also violently anti-Semitic. And, and I thought that was um, very interesting. Now, I'd actually previously warned her about this particular social group and told her that they are uh, very anti-Semitic and they've got very dangerous politics associated with them and hey presto she goes and finds out about them and joins them and I can't help but wonder whether there was this inclination inside her just to unite with something that was um, simplistic that had some connection with her ancestry and satisfied and fulfilled her own views, hatreds and prejudices I feel that would make um, a lot of sense. But that's true with um, a wide variety of different spiritual paths and processes. But the behavior of the individual in a religious group is not actually defined by the religion, it's defined by their own psychology. And this is something which most people tend to forget about. Uh, I feel that religion can actually be a very dangerous thing because it gives people uh, a sense or an illusion of authority or a position of power may be that um, is essentially based upon rubbish. It's based purely upon fiction. It's not based upon any real fact and as such it can lead people to do or say things which are actually dangerous or politically inappropriate. And I think there's plenty of examples of that on YouTube when we have a look at um, the very conservative Christians, the, um, the Christian right I think they're called, and of course the occasional individual who spouts on about wanting to physically assault or in other ways damage people who somehow disagree with his point of view, uh, of which a recent example has <laughs> come to light thanks to a lot of the other YouTubers. So individuals choose their path or their interpretation of the path because of something inside them. All right. So when, when you're criticizing your religion, maybe you're criticizing a type of person or a certain subset of a social group rather than actually attacking the religion. All right. Nick Dodge signing out for now.